is the founder of Inua Dialogue. Janet, it's so good to see you. It's so good to see you, Zinzi. When was the last time you were on TV? Oh my goodness, April 10th. Well, I've done a couple of interviews on TV since I left. Right. But my last show was on April 10th, 2017. Now, we had the First Lady saying the issue in mm -hmm. regards to stigma. How can we as a nation fight this whole issue of stigma when it comes to menstrual cycles? Something that is such a natural phenomenon. Exactly. Thanks for that, Zinzi. It's so sad that at this day and age, menstruation, conversations around it are still considered taboo. Mm. A lot of girls and women are still stigmatized. Um, and what's even more concerning is the lack of access to sanitary products, mm. whether it's girls or women. There's so many. There's 10 million girls and women who menstruate in Kenya. Let's 10 million. 10 million. Um, this is statistics from the Ministry of Health um, and UNICEF. I do a lot of work with UNICEF as well. And, you know, not that many of us are lucky enough to be able to access these sanitary mm -hmm. products. You'd be surprised. You and I are the minority. Mm -hmm. A lot of women and girls struggle. And so what we need to do, we need to engage. The conversation has really scaled since um, I started in Nwadada Foundation a few years ago. Yesterday, there was a menstrual health management symposium in Johannesburg. We had the Menstrual Hygiene Day. We've seen, you know, CS um, Amina. We've seen the First Lady. And we've even seen men like King Kaka mm. doing something. So the conversation needs to be normalized. That's the only way we can begin to see this as a transition and not a disruption. Because it disrupts the lives of so many girls and women, especially girls. Mm. Someone like Zenga is eight years old, nine years old. No one has talked to them because you expect them to be 12 or 13 before they start their menses. But if we have this conversation and engage and normalize, then I think we'll be making some headway. Speaking of period poverty, mm -hmm. is it that we don't have policies in Kenya that's mm -hmm. supposed to govern this? Where, is it, where are the loopholes? Because when you have 10 million women and girls mm -hmm. um, in Kenya who have their menstrual cycle, then you have young girls as, as young as eight mm -hmm. having to give things just to get a packet of pads. Where are we going wrong as a society, as that, a government? That's such a good question, Zinzi. Um, I'll address some of the issues in Kenya, but you'd be surprised. Mm. Period poverty is global. Period poverty is in Scotland. Scotland, you know. It's in the United Kingdom. It's in Los Angeles. It's in India. It's in Kenya. So around the world, there are women and girls who do not have access to sanitary products. And I know in a country like Scotland, they're trying to make sure that these products are going to be free. I think it's in the works and it'll happen soon. Mm -hmm. um, in Kenya, we have seen the government starting to step up. Um, you know, recently we saw P Professor Kobia, uh, the CS for Gender, flag off sanitary towels and panties for girls across Kenya. We've again seen the First Lady. We saw uh, President Kenyatta sign into law the bill mm. to make sanitary pads free. We don't have implementation. That's a very big issue. When you asked what are the issues, implementation needs to happen so that if a girl is getting a free exercise book, she gets pads and a panty. The other issue is lack of infrastructure, like, you know, sanitation. You have girls who have their period, but they have nowhere to shower, no, nowhere to sort of like clean themselves. Yes. Disposal is a very big issue. So you have girls and women throwing their pads in pit latrines and them filling up. So we need infrastructure around wash facilities in schools, especially. We need implementation of policy. We need to not have sanitary pads taxed in this country. Mm. It's ridiculous that they're still taxed, which kind of means they're considered a luxury good. And it's not a luxury because at one point or another, m most, if not all women and girls are going to go through this process. And so we are seeing a change happening. The government is trying to step up and I, I want to commend them for that. It still needs to be more. Mm -hmm. When you have such a huge percentage of girls, particularly in areas like in Western Kenya, trading sex for pads, that makes you realize if we don't make these pads or sanitary products, I say sanitary products because it be disposable pads, yes. reusable pads. Yes. If we don't make them available, if we don't educate these girls about what's happening in their bodies, educate the boys and men, we are going to continue seeing 14, 15 year old girls trade their bodies for pads. So we need better implementation of policy, better engagement. Um, we need regulations because a lot of people ask me, what about reusable pads? Mm. It's not that they're bad, but they need to be regulated. Are these girls washing them properly? Yes. If you don't, that's a health hazard for them. So there's still a lot that needs to come into play, mm. but so far at least, where we were five years ago, we're in a different place today. Okay, yeah. and we're gonna keep making progress as a nation. We will. But making progress as a nation, we need men on the table. We do. We need the likes of King Kaka. Mm -hmm. So what is the role of men in, in menstrual health? Yeah. And how, because we don't want them to be shy. Yes. They need to be part of the table and part of the conversation. Yeah. How do we look them in? I think as when the girls start, so right now in school, this 
program needs to be, it almost needs to be compulsory. You know, reproductive health is such a by the way, a lot of the time. It's just like, yeah, 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 this is what's happening to your body. Anyway, moving on. We need to be intentional about teaching our girls and boys on what's happening to their bodies. And when you're talking to the girls, make sure the boys are in the room. Mm. Because then, you know, culturally in Kenya, there's this whole thing for no, there's some things we can't really say when boys are in the room. But if they don't know, they're the same ones who'll be giggling when a girl steps out and she's stained herself. Oh, yeah. So I think that's how we get boys knowing it very early. It starts in school, it starts with the curriculum, mm. addressing it from a very young age. Um, so the role of men is to support and understand that this is your sister, your mother, your cousin, your friend. All these girls in your life and women are menstruating and so, and sometimes it comes with so many issues, whether it's endometriosis, whether it's lack of access to products, it will affect your life. If there's a woman in your life who doesn't have access, who is sick, who isn't informed. So it's great to see what people like Inkaka are doing. There's a lot of other men who are beginning to understand that, wait a minute, this is an issue. It, at the end of the day, can also affect your economy because mm -hmm. you have girls who can't access pads, so they can't go to school. They miss out almost a month and a half worth of school in a year. So what's going to happen? They're very vulnerable to early pregnancy, to HIV, and then they're not contributing to their households in future. They can't even compete in class. They can't compete in class. You can't perform and attend school because of your menstrual period. And why should it be a disruption? Surely it's a transition. We need to just make it more efficient, especially for girls who come from vulnerable areas. Mm. We need to normalize it and be like, this is going to happen. It's OK. You're fine. Don't be traumatized. This is how to use a pad and panty. This is now what you need to know about your body about your hygiene mm. and make sure the boys are aware because they grow into men who are exposed and don't laugh at it or see it as an issue. Mm -hmm. So we need to engage men when they're boys and then continue having the conversation with them. I think that's what can happen. So looping them into the conversation as early as primary. When the Absolutely. girls are being taught these things, yeah. they need to be there. They do need to be there. All right, so we've talked about the government's role mm -hmm. and even the role of men. Private sector. Yeah. How can the private sector contribute mm -hmm. to menstrual health here in Kenya and even on the African continent? Mm -hmm. So I think private sector has probably been... Um, one of the more active because they're able to maybe use their CSR. What I would probably say is it needs to be more streamlined. We need private sectors, the private sector to say, we are going to be intentional about dedicating some of our resources to improving menstrual health management in Kenya. So it's not just touch and go, where you distribute pads for one year and then you kind of like leave these girls. Remember, they're not gonna menstruate for one year. Mm. So if possible, if a couple of them could commit and say, we want to work with girls in Kenya and we want to commit our resources, because resources is needed if we're going to improve infrastructure, if we're going to improve mentorship, if we're going to improve adolescent health. So the private sector needs to invest more. Mm. There, there's many of them who are doing an incredible job, but like I said, a lot of the time you find it's very touch and go. There needs to be a lot more consistency. So if the government and the private sector and people like you and I can come together, mm. because this affects someone in our lives, then we have a normalization of this transition and we're aware of the vulnerabilities. All right, menstrual health was on 28th of May. Yeah. What are your closing remarks? No more limits. You know, and that was the, that was the theme this year. We cannot, in 2018, be having girls and women have to choose between food and a pad. It can't be. It's so unfair mm. because they need to eat, but they also need to menstruate in a hygienic manner with dignity, with confidence. So my closing remarks are let's all get on board in this conversation. I know sometimes we feel like these conversations can be, they have a lot of fatigue. We keep having them. But until something is done, something that's concrete, something that's streamlined, mm. we will have a lot of suffering. So no more limits, no more stigmatization, no more taboo. Let's come together and make sure that girls and women around the world menstruate with dignity. All right. Yeah. Well, we've had it from Janet. Janet Bugwa, she is the founder of Inua Dada. They're giving us an overview of menstrual health here in Kenya and really on the African continent. No more limits, you've had it, and of how we can also loop men into the conversation. Michael. All right, and uh, well, it is definitely a conversation that needs to continue. Yes. And it's all about getting a level playing field, both for boys and girls, because you can imagine how unfair it is uh, for boys to be going for a lesson and uh, girls for the same lesson. They're expected to do an exam at the end of the year, yet the girl has had so many challenges yes. in between that year, uh, especially when they don't have just the basics uh, for menstruation. So it's a, con co a conversation that needs to continue. Thank you very much, Janet, for Thank joining you, us this morning. Yeah. Zinzi, Thank Asante you. Sana. But you know, time waits for no man, and it's time for
for us to say goodbye. And like we say it here, it's a wrap. But do stay with us right here on KTA News. News Center is lined up for you from me and um, from a very able team. We'd like to say thank you for watching. Do have yourselves a great day. God bless. KTN News, get the whole story.